Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to, I think this is my third video. In uh, today's video, we're going to sit down and talk with a buddy of mine, a uh, good buddy, Caleb. And uh, we're going to have him show us some of his guns, some of the things that he likes to play when he goes out to the range. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Uh, these are some of my guns that I have here. Um, as you know, the YouTube channel, it's, it's, it's inspired around some of the 2A community stuff. Um, Palace knows that I'm a, a gun guy. Not really a gun guy, I, I, I like to shoot. Um, I'm not a gun guy, I don't say because I don't, <laughs> I don't really collect guns. Um, I only collect guns that I, I shoot. So, um, you know, coming to Florida, I, I got real big into the training community and stuff like that. So I started training with a lot of people, taking a lot of courses and stuff, and just trying to be better as a shooter. Um, so we'll start with like my general gun that I usually use for classes and, and just range time and stuff like that. Uh, so this is my general gun. This is my uh, BCM 11.5 inch. Um, Nothing really special about the upper. It's coming directly from BCM. It's not a build or anything like that. Um, it's their Mark II line, so it's their new line of uppers. Um, and then I'm running a Mod Light PLH version two. Um, it's just like their newer line of lights. Um, really bright lights, like crazy stupid bright. Brighter than my Surefires. Um, but it's at a price point. I mean, it's at, I think, starts off retails at like 350. Um, I'm running this with a Surefire pressure pad, and then at the at the at the tip, if I don't have any like accessories for like night vision or anything like that, and I'm only running like a red dot or something like that, I like to pair it with uh, backup iron sights. So I am running a Griffin Armament front sight and a Magpul Embus back sight, um, rear sight. Nothing special. These rear sights are pretty cheap now. They're not the pros. Um, this Griffin Armament sight is a little bit more expensive. It's all metal. So, yeah. Uh, moving further back, I am running a EOTech. Um, I'm a big fan of EOTechs. You know, some guys say you're the EOTech guy or aim point guy. I like both of them, but I like EOTech because the EOTech's a little bit uh, less expensive. And I actually love the reticle. Um, the reticle for me, if you guys don't know, it's like a donut with a dot in the middle. Um, and for me, I pick up targets a lot faster with that reticle. Um, it just works for me. Um, the lower, for my lowers, for my, for my primary guns, I like to run ambidextrous lowers. Um, it's just a lot nicer when you're clearing malfunctions and stuff like that. And also, if I bring somebody to the range who's a left-handed shooter, I can give this gun to them and they won't have any issues because all their controls are on the right side and the left side. Um, these lowers are a little bit more expensive, um, but they're, you know, supreme quality. So I think total this lower is around complete. It's around like five something, five, five eighty ish. Um, magazines, usually with magazines, I know the standard right now is um, Magpul magazines. For me, I'm not a huge fan of Magpul magazines. Um, I've had issues with cracked feed lips and stuff like that. It caused malfunctions in the guns, like in classes and stuff. Um, I heard the Gen 3s are really good. So if you buy a Magpul magazine, just buy the Gen 3s. I do have some. I primarily run aluminum and steel magazines. Um, this one is from Surefeed, and I've never had any issues with their magazines. Not saying that they're perfect, but just my experience. Um, triggers. The triggers that I'm running in most of my guns nowadays are the LaRue MBT2. Um, these come at a good price point, 80 bucks. And uh, they're very good two-stage triggers. Um, I know most guys are Geisley guys, um, and I have a couple Geisley triggers myself, but I like this trigger, it just works for me. Um, the trigger reset in the wall is, is really crisp for me, and I like the feel of it, so I opted for a cheaper trigger. Um, as far as accessories go that, you know, like the controls and stuff like that, I like to run Radian accessories. The Radians that I'm running right now, I'm running the Talon um, Ambidextrous Safety, which is, I can, mitigate the safety on either side of the of the weapon, the right side or the left side. Um, and then I'm running their ambidextrous charging handle. Um, 
So, you know, for you guys that's just getting into shooting and stuff like that, it's not really necessary. Um, none of this stuff is necessary. It's just that, you know, as you progress as a shooter and stuff like that, you, you find that certain things work a lot better than like their regular mil spec stuff. Um, this is considered a pistol. As you see, I'm running the SB Tactical Brace, the SBA3. Um, I chose to do this because, you know, if I take classes in other states or if I travel and I want to take a gun with me, which I do everywhere I go, um, I don't want to have to file any paper with the, with the ATF. Um, so I didn't want to go through the process of getting a tax stamp and file and, and you know, submit $200 to the ATF just so I could put a, a stock on it. Um, I mean, if you guys don't know, braces and stocks nowadays are pretty much, you get the same cheek weld. Um, I haven't seen a, a huge difference in the performance of a brace versus a stock besides the aesthetics of it. So for me, it works. Um, and it's a good option for the, your everyday guy. I mean, if you're not on a SWAT team or some super operator person, I don't see a reason for you to get an SBR. But hey, it's all about your preference. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this gun. Um, so once again, it's 11.5 BCM. I think total, this is probably around 2,500, 2,500 bucks total.